Good evening, students, faculty, and friends. Thank you very much for joining us for the opening of this very special exhibition. The Lilavati Lalbai Library is very pleased to welcome the Kruvia School in Bombay and their field study program that has been managed by their Dean of Research, Rohan Shiv Kumar. What's making this very special for us is that uh, such field studies, related study programs, is commonplace. And we are very familiar with doing that, everyone knows about that, but what we're really pleased about is to have the presence of another school and their work and their way of seeing for us to enjoy and to be challenged by. So, as you many of you know, we, with the Foundation Studio, went off to Banaras, Varanasi this year, and produced a wonderful body of work. So they too uh, went off on their trip, which was to Brudge, and have done something that is equally interesting. So we hope in the course of this month that the exhibition is here. It's a chance to see how people see. And so what are we here for? Only to see, and in seeing then to record. So seeing is a, a pleasure, but recording is an, a willful act. And so these exhibitions are a great commitment to the understanding of place. And understanding place then gives us a chance in terms of designers is to engage and make decisions and make a difference. So we're very grateful to Krivia and to their students and to their faculty who brought this uh, to being. I'm going to introduce uh, Rohan Shivkumar now. He's going to be able to introduce himself and then their work. And then our president, Bimal, is going to thank on behalf of SEPT and we will open the exhibition then when there are two special students up here who are somewhere, uh, Anuja and Rashi, who have been here working tirelessly for the last two days, making sure that it happens, in association with our wonderful workshop team, led by Janidbai and a team of helpers from Gulbai Tekra, who always turn up trumps, led by Rajesh Bai. Thank you very much to all of those, and all of that supervised by Urve Mam, who is in charge of workshop and exhibitions. So without this great team, none of this would happen. So thanks to all of that uh, support from all of you. So I think uh, I'll invite uh, Rohan Bai to come and talk, and uh, we will then be able to uh, celebrate their students as well in time. So Rohan Bai, please come. Thank you, Arthur, and thank you, Sept. It's uh, quite a privilege and a little frightening. There they are, the students are here. Rashi and Anuja, please do come up and sit up in front. They were hiding at the back, a little shy. Uh, it's really an honor uh, to actually come and present our work at Sept uh, with its incredible history and the incredible work that's happening here right now. Uh, I come from a school of architecture. I teach at the Kamla Reja College of Architecture. It is a school that started in 1992. So it's just, just about recently completed 25 years. And over the years, it's uh, been, tr it's an ex it, it tries different things out, right? Uh, it's a school in Bombay and that energy has really begun to influence the way that it really operates. So it's always in many ways very volatile in nature. Uh, one of the things that it has always been interested in doing is trying to really rethink some of the categories through which we understand architecture in India. And one of the ways it really thinks that it can begin that process is by the engagement with the concrete world outside. Right? And uh, also to begin to look at the concrete world, uh, not through a sort of uh, rose-tinted tinted sort of way, but rather look at what are the sorts of ways in which spatial practices, uh, spatial environment, and what is exactly that's happening with the environment itself. And because of that, uh, we really have a study trip program uh, that runs across four years, from the first year till the fourth year, uh, that each has a very different sort of emphasis. I'll just place that emphasis for you a little bit. In the first year, we are really looking at a sort of an observational mode within students, where they are trying to understand the relationship between, let's say, spatial practices and built form. So usually the students go to a smaller village settlement um, on the Konkan coast, and they run a study through drawings, usually always hand drawings, never use a scale. Uh, because they want to get a sense of pacing, etc., with respect to, and, the, and, and an ability to see the uh, way that the vernacular very often is shaped. In the second year, it's a measure drawing exercise. Um, 
And that's the point at which uh, we really are interested in documenting the tectonics, the typologies of architectures that really have not been documented otherwise. So we try and find places, like we had an entire project in the Northeast, where we were going to different cities in the Northeast and trying to document the architecture of those areas, whether that's Shillong or whether that's Majuli or Yuksom, uh, which is in Sikkim. In the third year, uh, we are really interested in kind of taking that one step further and thinking about how does an architectural intervention um, kind of, how, how do, I mean, what is the relationship between the architectural language and institutional systems? This is really what we are looking at. And I'll be talking about that a little later on, so I'll skip that, skip that for now. And the in the fourth year, we are really interested in urban systems and thinking about how do urban systems kind of operate and thinking about what does architectural practice mean in today's complex sort of uh, kind of cities. Um, that those are the ways in which we've planned the four years of the, of the, of the entire course. Each of these study trips, um, we make sure that the student is also pushed into a mode of intervention. So they do the study, they come back, and they have to do a studio project that is very often based in that same landscape. And that studio project is often shaped on by the mode through which the study is kind of designed, as it were. Right? So that's uh, the other thing I needed to tell you. Okay. Now in the third year, like I said a little earlier, uh, we are really interested in looking at institutional systems and architectural language. This is our, this is our focus. For the past few years, we've been looking at institutions of the state and thinking about questions of architectural language. One of the sort of tropes of modern Indian architecture, is this Indian enough? Or what is the language of the modern India? I mean, all of those things. Uh, two years back, we started a new program or a new project as such, which was to, again, investigate the architectures of two of the most powerful institutional systems that shape our identities. The first is the idea of the state, and the other one is that of faith, uh, in, in a loose way. In the first semester, we we are really interested in looking at the architecture of the state. So we're looking at the way in which uh, state infrastructure uh, operates at a more sort of, in, in the city of Bombay. Uh, so looking at the judiciary, you're looking at the executive and the way that it is spatialized in our city. And in the second semester, we are interested in the architecture of faith. Right? Uh, this is a very kind of curious thing because what we found is that very often when looking at religious architecture, um, architectural sense of discourse doesn't seem to know what it wants to do is what we felt. Either it romanticizes the artifact, uh, saying that, oh, what a wonderful temple or whatever, or what great practices, etc. cetera, uh, but usually doesn't necessarily look at the relationship of those practices to everyday life, right? So one of the things we were interested in doing is, is investigating that. How does a large religious institution affect uh, the everyday lives of people and therefore the architecture that emerges? What are the sorts of institutional systems that are emergent because of that large religious sort of uh, presence within a city? Uh, last year, we looked at uh, the Dargah in Ajmer uh, as the object that we were studying. And we were really looking at the way that everyday life of people intersects with the different institutional systems, you know, loosely around the question, uh, uh, loosely around the Dargah. Uh, that's how we uh, framed the study. The result was a sort of website that we had made, um, uh, which exists right now somewhere on the internet. And the students went on to do an architectural intervention in that very landscape. This year, uh, which is actually the year that we are currently in, uh, we were really interested in thinking about um, the idea of the pilgrimage. Uh, because the pilgrimage, we felt, was uh, an articulation of space and time. Because it's through a journey that is that is repeated over many, many years that a sacred landscape is constructed in the mind, like, you know. Uh, and, and you find many of these pilgrimages that exist in different sort of religious towns across the country. Um, <coughs> Banaras, for one, right, uh, which has an entire parikrama. Um, but of course, the real parikrama, which is meant to be a circle. Uh, but of course, the circle doesn't exist. What exists is a series of, uh, of sites that you keep going to one after the other in a certain sequence. And in each of these, you're supposed to perform a particular ritual, right? So for us, it became interesting to think about the relationship between the imagined, the perceived or the actual architectural, and the action itself, or the rituals or the bodies and the way that they perform within these spaces. <coughs> uh, a landscape that became really interesting for us to explore a little further was the landscape of Braj. So Braj. Uh, is Braj Bhumi, uh, which you all, all have heard of in multiple songs and multiple stories. Right? 
it is the landscape in which Krishna uh, is said to have grown up. Uh, it's a landscape that centers around the town of Mathura. Uh, there are many other little towns around. Each of them is significant in some way in relationship to the story of Krishna. Uh, there is Govardhan, which is the mountain that he lifted on his finger uh, to protect his followers from the wrath of Indra. Uh, there is Gokul, the place where he grew up. Um, uh, and he stole butter and all of those stories. And there is Vrindavan, the garden in which he performed his Ras Leela with the gopis and with Radha. These are some of the main towns. There are other towns as well. There's Nandagao and there's Barsana. All of them are part of the same landscape. Uh, this entire landscape is marked by the presence of a Parikrama. It's called the Chaurasi Coast Parikrama. It begins in Mathura uh, or in Vrindavan, depending on whom you follow. Uh, because there are many different sects and each of them have their own uh, Parikrama. And it follows a series of sites that goes all the way across this landscape. It's an enormous landscape that goes through Haryana, uh, UP. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's an enormous sort of geography. The entire Parikrama is 252 kilometers long. Right? Our ambition was that we had 80 students that we were going to do the whole Parikrama. We were going to do 252 kilometers. We we're going to go to each and every one of those sites and document every single one of the architectural presences of those imagined spaces. Didn't happen. Uh, what we did instead is we narrowed the scope down a little bit, and we chose um, three of the main cities within within uh, the Braj region. Each of those cities has also a parikrama that goes around it. Uh, Mathura, for example, has two parikramas. Am I right? Uh, uh, Vrindavan has one, and Govardhan has one. Govardhan, you actually go all the way around the around the mountain. And you have all these water bodies that are there on the edges. They're extraordinary. These the, the, the spaces are extraordinary. The stories are extraordinary uh, that happen in that landscape. <coughs> so we decided to you know, follow the parikrama and document the architecture of these landscapes. Uh, one thing we knew we wa didn't want to do is that we didn't want to make measure drawings. Because the measure drawings they had done last year, and we did want to kind of push uh, the act of representation. And really think about how do you develop a mode of representation that is able to tell the story and the space and the texture of that landscape. Uh, so we kind of had some references, actually, that came to us. The most obvious one were miniature paintings. Uh, Krishna stories have been told through miniature through the ages. And we felt that the way that the miniature is able to really explode space and layer space uh, was an Im interesting sort of device that we could use. Uh, the other one was Neelima Sheikh's uh, work in Kashmir. I don't know whether you know, this, know, that, know that work, but she uses these long scroll-like paintings within which she unfolds spaces one behind the other and uses text and bodies in different postures to begin to tell stories. That was our other reference. And the third reference that we had was actually Sanji stencils. Uh, so those were which actually come from the town of Mathura. So these are the sorts of references that we had. And what we thought we'll do is that begin to tell the story of the Parikrama as a series of sites through which one would then go through continuing the Parikrama. So what we have actually downstairs uh, is we have uh, an exhibition that consists of four such segments, three of which are complete segments, which is you have the entire Vrindavan Parikrama, Govardhan Parikrama, and the Mathura Parikrama. And you also have a short segment of the Chaurasi Coast uh, Parikrama that goes through the town of Gokul, where he grew up. It's to be continued, hopefully, sometime in the future, and we'll complete all 252 uh, sites, I hope. Um, so that's what, the, uh, that's what the exhibition is downstairs. Uh, just one of the things that we felt, I need to kind of come back to KRVI and the way that we are imagining what the study, t what, 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 what the role of the architecture school is, in to some extent. Uh, we really feel that, I mean, we are very glad to have this exhibition here, we really are, because it really is a way for us to start thinking about the dissemination of knowledge as far as the school is concerned. We feel that architecture schools have this incredible opportunity and ability uh, to start rethinking some of the categories through which we are understanding our own architectural present as well as past. Uh, so within the school, we are very consciously focusing on, focusing in on landscapes that have not been documented. Uh, and that is something that, so the Northeast is one. Uh, we are looking at the Doab. Uh, which is the land between the Ganga and the Yamuna, the entire kind of, that's the other sort of area that we're looking at. And the Braj project is actually part of that story. Uh, we've also done projects in Lucknow, Ilhabad, uh, Dehradun, Gwalior, 
that entire sort of uh, that, that that entire sort of region. So this is, uh, I, uh, I guess, our first experiment at uh, this kind of uh, work and this kind of drawing. Uh, we're very very happy that, too, and very kind of proud also to some extent that we are here. Uh, really delighted. Anuja and Rashi are here. Uh, they are the ones who have actually worked very very hard uh, to put up the exhibition. Uh, they are there to give you details of the exhibition if you so desire uh, downstairs, and maybe they can walk you through, walk you through them. Right. Uh, thank you again uh, for this honor, um, and I hope you will have many questions and comments that we can learn from. Thank you so much. Ro Rohan and students from KRBI and friends, thank you very much for making this exhibition happen. Um, it grew out of a chance encounter. We met at a party, um, uh, and, and, and he was showing me some work that his students have done on his phone. And I said, wouldn't it be a great idea to get that work here and exhibit it? Then I spoke with Arthur about it, who is, is working hard to make uh, this library a sort of a great place for getting the best that we can. And he pursued you people. And uh, then the workshop team and Urvi and her team worked on it. So I'm really, really happy that uh, this has finally happened. Thank you very much for coming. And thank you for all the hard work that you have put in to bring the exhibition, set it up, etc. I also hope that this is not one off. I hope that this becomes uh, uh, an exchange of some sort. Um, what we are trying to do here, and Arthur has said that at the library here, is to make this a space, uh, I mean, as, he's, as he always reminds people, in the classrooms you are learning your skills, your abilities to become a professional, and this is the place where uh, what the profession is producing and what the students and other schools are producing is put up to enrich the learning. Uh, perhaps we can have uh, 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 an exchange between uh, this wonderful school of yours in Mumbai and this one here. And uh, maybe our students can put up something. Maybe some of the exhibitions of professional work that are developed for this space here can be transported there because they are ready and it's material that then gets used. Maybe you will make exhibitions that we can then bring here and it be a wonderful exchange uh, that way and all that collaboration leads to just uh, more energy, more learning. So with that, thank you very much, uh, Rohan, for bringing this exhibition here. Thank you for all the hard work you put in. Thank you, Arthur, and let's get going. <laughs> I'm going to invite the hardworking girls up to help open the exhibition and perhaps with Thank you.